quite often what happens is the more you learn, the slower you go. Okay. And that can be very frustrating and people think that the Spanish is going backwards. I've heard so many times people saying, my Spanish is going backwards. It isn't. It's going forwards, but it's going forwards in a different way. Let me explain. All right. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. Right. There are four types of learning, okay? Or four stages of learning, and I hope I, I can fit them on this so you can see them. Right, number one, can you see that? Yeah. Number one is this. Unconsciously incompetent. This is how they call it. In, unconsciously incompetent. Right, so unconscious means you're not aware of it and you're incompetent means you're not good at it, okay? It doesn't mean you're rubbish at it. Well, it, it, it does, it means you're rubbish at it, but you don't know. So this is, you don't know that you don't know. Imagine before you ever started learning Spanish. Somebody say, could you speak Spanish, you think? Mm, I don't know, maybe, don't know, never tried it, right? This is the stage, unconsciously incompetent. There's another expression for it, which is ignorance is bliss. This is the bliss part. Okay, this is where you are before you choose to learn. Spanish is kind of in this bliss of, hey, I might be okay. Hey, I might be fantastic at learning Spanish. Who knows? Yeah, no frame of reference. Unconsciously incompetent. So that when you come to your first Spanish lesson, full of ideals and, and excitement and thrill, this is where you are, in ignorance. But right. then you start learning. Okay, and suddenly you jump into the next level of learning or level of understanding, which is consciously incompetent. Okay, now what does that mean? That means that you suddenly know that you don't know. Somebody starts saying to you, Hola, que tal? Que tal el día? And you and you completely blank and you say uh, I have no idea what you are saying I, I have no idea of Spanish I don't know any Spanish so this is kind of the realization all right this is the realization that you don't know before you weren't sure maybe but now you know you don't know all right this is the harsh realization normally happens um, within the first <laughs> first class second class okay then you get to level three. Okay, and I'm hoping that you can still see this on the board. Yes, it looks like it. And this is consciously competent. Now, what's this about? Consciously competent. What this is about is you start to learn things. Okay, you start to learn how to make sentences. You start to learn how to put them together. But you're having to do it consciously. As I'm talking to you now, I'm not talking to you in a conscious fashion. I'm not thinking about how to structure my sentences. That's a job of my unconscious mind, okay? But when you first start learning Spanish, and for a long time, you are in what's called conscious competence. That's where you know how to do it, but you haven't got it kind of habituated in your mind. Think about this, and I've used this, this um, analogy a number of times. When you start driving a car, okay, you get your first lesson, and the, the teacher says to you, okay, so what you have to do, and in England we have a clutch, okay, I don't know if, if, uh, if you've used a clutch car, but it's slightly even more complex. complex. He says, okay, so what you're gonna do is you, you need to check your wing mirror, you need to put your indicator on, okay, if the road's clear, but check, it's only if the road's clear, then you need to put your clutch down, keep your handbrake on, put yourself into gear, into first gear, get your bite on your clutch with, your, with the right amount of revs, and then when when you, it's clear for you to pull out, let your handbrake, you go, wow, I, I beg your pardon? I've got to do what? How, how, how is it, it's not possible for a mind to hold all that information? Okay, it's just the most bizarre thing when they're telling you what you have to do and you think, that's just impossible. That are too many things to do, okay? And then, look at yourself two years on 
Not even that, six months on. Suddenly, you pass your test, okay? You're pulling out, you're doing all of those things, and you're checking your hair in the mirror, you're looking back to see if the kids are making a mess on the back seat, and you're turning the radio on. Why? Because you've moved out of this consciously competent. Now, I'm gonna put a star there because I'm gonna come back to it. What's the next level? Once you have habituated everything for, can you see it? I think we'll just squeeze it on. Then you become, beg your pardon, unconsciously competent. That is, you don't know you know. Okay, bizarrely enough. You see, when, you, when you're speaking in your mother tongue, you don't know where the sen where are the sentence is coming from. Where do they come from when you make, you, all you have is the idea of what you want to say and your unconscious mind does the rest, okay? This is, this is the goal. This is the goal of where you want to be in Spanish, becoming unconsciously competent, just like tying your shoelace. Try and explain to somebody how you tie your shoelace. You don't know. You tie your shoelace in a, in a habituated way. Okay? It's exactly the same with your Spanish. That's where you're going to get to. But let me tell you, this step here, this consciously competent, is the longest period of time that you're going to spend in a learning mode. Okay? It's a long period of time. The reason is because what you're doing is you're gaining information. That information is slipping into unconsciously competent. All right. For example, at the beginning you learn how to greet somebody. Hola, ¿qué tal? All right. Now, very quickly that becomes habituated, and as soon as somebody greets you, you say Hola, ¿qué tal? All right. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think how how is that? Has that got an accent on it? No, no. Hola, ¿qué tal? But then the next step comes along, and suddenly you drop back to consciously competent or consciously incompetent. You think I don't know what to say now. Okay, so what, what you're doing is you're doing this step forward, step back, step forward, step back. Okay, and this is the place, consciously competent, this is the most frustrating place, and this is the place where so many people drop out. So many people give it up because they say it's too hard, it's going too slowly, I'm going backwards, my Spanish is slower, of course it's slower. When you don't know, you don't know. Okay, yeah, you just say whatever. Well, I've heard the most fluent people speaking Spanish in such an awful way, but they have no idea that they don't know. They think they know. Some people get stuck here and they just <laughs> load of rubbish, okay? What you want is to be in the consciously competent all the time, stay there, constantly learning, understanding, and the more you practice, Practice is actually what takes it from this point into this point. So you become unconsciously confident. You don't need to think about it. People say, um, do you know what? The other day I found myself thinking in Spanish. I found myself dreaming in Spanish. Fantastic. That is you starting to become unconscious with your Spanish. But it's a long process. Don't think it's overnight. When people phone me, and sometimes they phone me and say, uh, how many lessons do I need to be able to speak Spanish? I can't answer them. Well, I don't know. Are you a genius? Or are you moderately intelligent like everybody? What are you? Because it depends on how much time you spend. It depends on so many things. Okay? So, that's your aim. To get to consciously... Unconsciously competent, I should say. Now... What I suggest that you do is this, because when you're in this place here, this, this consciously competent, you give yourself such a hard time often. Say, oh, my Spanish hasn't moved on. Honestly, oh, it's just, oh, I'm so frustrated. Do yourself a big favor. Go back a year in your mind and just consider what your Spanish was like a year ago. Go back two years in your mind and consider what your Spanish was like then. That's how you know how you progressed. Not looking at where you are now. 
because I'm going to tell you after 15 years of learning Spanish I know that I've still got a long way to go to get to the level that I want to get to it isn't that my Spanish is no good it's just it's not where I want it to be okay and it's never been where I wanted it to be no matter what stage I got to so I'm constantly dropping in between these two here that's okay that's the joy of learning Spanish that's the fun of it and it is fun and that's what it should be so when you're here and you're feeling stressed and you're thinking I've got so many plates I'm spinning I'm dropping the plates it's okay just understand that's where you are and you'll jump out you'll come forward you'll move forward into that unconsciously competent stage okay so I hope that's helped just keep at it learning Spanish is rolling it a, a rolling a ball up a hill a big rock up a hill okay it's hard it's hard it's hard and sometimes you can't see that you're that close to the peak okay and sometimes you give up when you're that close just to getting to that stage of course there's another mountain there's another hill but there's a lovely ride down until you get to the next one okay so just keep pushing keep rolling your rock and you'll get there okay yeah hasta luego adios